The Apostolic Constitutions of Our Lord Jesus Christ to His Twelve Disciples. This is part 12 of our readings. We continue with Book 7, the beginning of Book 7. And on the PDF, this is on page 135 of 211 pages, concerning the deport deportment and the Holy Eucharist and the initiation into Christ. We know that in the 40 days after Christ's resurrection and before his assumption, he was dictating to his disciples and apostles how the church was to be run. Of course, this was before the coming of the Holy Spirit on uh, Pentecost. And uh, if you see the uh, parts before this, he talks about various very important things having to do with priests, bishops, uh, uh, widows, uh, the uh, virgins, they had monastic uh, uh, houses, the houses for the widows, the houses for the virgins, the houses for those who uh, were poor, and what to do with heretics as well. When the proper date of Easter was, Easter is always at, to be celebrated after the Hebrew Pesach, uh, the first Sunday after the Hebrew Pesach. We know that many times, unfortunately, the Catholic and the Protestant Church hold Easter before the Jewish Pesach. And our Lord Christ said that even if the Hebrews have the date of Pesach wrong, you still have to follow their lead and have the first Sunday after Pesach being Easter, being uh, Pascha, as we said, the Holy Pascha, Passover, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, chapter 1 of Book 7, that there are two ways the one natural of life and the other introduced afterwards of death, and that the former is from God and the latter of error from the snares of the adversary. The lawgiver Moses said to the Israelites, Behold, I have set before your face the way of life and the way of death, and added, Choose life that thou mayest live. Elijah the prophet also said to the people, How long will ye halt with your legs, both your legs? If the Lord be God, follow him. The Lord Jesus also said justly, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. We also, following our Master Christ, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe, are obliged to say that there are two ways, the one of life, the other of death, which have no comparison one with the other for they are very different, or rather entirely separate. And the way of life is natural, but that of death is afterwards introduced, it not being according to the mind of God, but from the snares of the adversary. Please support my Patreon channel, since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Chapter 2 of Book 7 Moral Exhortations of the Lord's Constitutions Agreeing with the Ancient Prohibition of the Divine Law The Prohibition of Anger, Corruption, Adultery, and Every Forbidden Action The first way, therefore, is that of life, and is this which the law also appointeth, to love the Lord with all thy mind, and with all thy soul, who is the one and only God, besides whom there is no other, and thy neighbor as thyself. And whatsoever thou art unwilling to have done to thee, that do not thou to another. Bless them that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you. Love your enemies, for what thanks is it if ye love those that love you? For even the Gentiles do the same. But love you those that hate you, and you shall have no enemy. For it saith, Thou shalt not hate any man, no, not an Egyptian, nor an Edomite, for they are all the workmanship of God. Avoid not the persons, but the sentiments of the wicked. Abstain from fleshly and worldly lusts. If any one smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Not that relation is evil, but that patience is more honorable. For David saith, If I have made returns to them that repaid me evil, if any one compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, and he that will see, sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also, 
and from him that taketh thy goods require them not again. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away, and shut thy hand. For the righteous man is compassionate and lendeth, for thy father would not have you give to all, who himself maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth his rain on the just and the unjust. It is therefore reasonable to give to all out of thine own labors. For the scripture saith, Honor the Lord out of thy righteous labors, but so that the saints be preferred. Thou shalt not kill, that this thou shalt not destroy a man like thyself, so that for thou dissolvest what was well made, not as if all killing were wicked, but only that of the innocent. But the killing which is just is reserved to the magistrates alone. Thou shalt not commit adultery, for thou dividest one flesh into two. They, shall, that they too shall be one flesh, for the husband and wife are one in nature, in constant, in union, in disposition, and the conduct of life, but they are separated in sex and in number. Thou shalt not corrupt boys, for this wickedness is contrary to nature, and arose from Sodom, which was consumed with fire sent from God. Let such a one be accursed, and all the people shall say, So be it. Thou shalt not commit fornication, for the scripture saith, There shall not be a fornicator among the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not steal, for Ahan, when he had stolen in Israel in, in, at Jericho, was stoned to death, and Gehazi, who stole and told a lie, inherited the leprosy of Naaman, and Judas, who stole the money of the poor, betrayed the Lord of glory to the Jews, and repented and hanged himself and burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And Ananias and Sapphira's his wife, who stole their own goods, and tempted the spirit of the Lord, were immediately at the sentence of Peter, our fellow apostle, struck dead. Chapter 3. Prohibition of conjuring, murder of infants, perjury, and false witness. Thou shalt not use magic, thou shalt not use witchcraft, for the scripture saith, Ye shall not suffer those who live, who practice sorcery. Thou shalt not slay thy child by causing abortion, nor cure that which is begotten, for everything that is shaped, and hath received a soul from God, if it be slain, shall be avenged, as being unjustly destroyed. Thou shalt not covet the things that belong to thy neighbor, as his wife, or his servant, or his ox, or his field. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, for it is said, Swear not at all. But if that cannot be, thou shalt swear piously and truly. Every one that sweareth by him shall be condemned. Thou shalt not bear false wilt, witness, for he that falsely accused, accuseth the needy provoketh to anger him that made him. Chapter 4 Prohibition of evil speaking and wrath, of deceitful conduct, idle words, falsehood, covetousness, and hypocrisy. Thou shalt not speak evil, for the scripture saith, Love not to speak evil, lest thou be taken away. Nor shalt thou be mindful of injuries, for the ways of those that remember injuries are unto death. Thou shalt not be double-minded or double-tongued, for a man's own lips are a strong snare for it to him, and a talkative person shall not be prospered upon the earth. Thy word shall not be in vain, for ye shall give account of every idle word. Thou shalt not lie, for the scripture saith, Thou wilt destroy all those that speak lies. Thou shalt not be covetous, nor rapacious, for it saith, Woe to him that is covetous towards his neighbor with an evil covetousness. Thou shalt not be a hypocrite, lest thy portion be with them. Chapter 5 Prohibition of malignity, acceptation of persons, prolonged anger, anger and detraction. Thou shalt not be ill-natured nor proud, for God resisteth the proud. Thou shalt not accept persons in judgment, for the judgment is the Lord's. Thou shalt not hate any man, thou shalt surely reprove thy brother, but not become guilty on his account. And reprove a wise man, and he will love thee. Eschew all evil, and all that is like it. For saith the scripture, Abstain from injustice, and trembling shall not come nigh thee. Be not soon angry, nor spiteful, nor passionate, nor furious, nor daring, lest thou undergo the fate of Cain, and of Saul, and of Joab. For the first of these slew his brother Abel, because Abel was found to be preferred before him with God, and because Abel's sacrifice was preferred, 
The second persecuted holy David, who, sat, who had slain Goliath the, Philist the Philistine, being envious upon the praises of the women who danced. The third slew two generals of armies, Abner of Israel and Amasa of Judah. Chapter 6, Concerning Augury and Enchantments. Be not a diviner, for that leadeth to idolatry. Besides divination, saith Samuel, is a sin. And there shall be no divination in Jacob, nor soothsayer in Israel. Thou shalt not use enchantments or purification for thy child. Thou shalt not be a soothsayer, nor a diviner, by great or by little birds. Nor shall thy learn wicked arts, for all these things the law hath forbidden. Long not for what is evil, for thou wilt be led into much sin. Speak not obscenely, nor use wanton glances, nor be a drunkard. For from such causes arise whoredoms and adulteries. Be not a lover of money, lest thou serve mammon instead of God. Be not vainglorious, nor elated, nor haughty, for hence spring manifestations of arrogance. Remember him who said, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. I have not excused myself in great matters, nor in things too high for me. Surely I was humble. Chapter 7 Prohibition of murmuring, arrogance, pride, and audacity. Be not a murmurer, remembering the punishment which they underwent who murmured against Moses. Be not self-willed, be not malicious, be not hard-hearted, be not passionate, be not pusillanimous, for all these things lead to blasphemy. But be meek as were Moses and David, since the meek shall inherit the earth. Chapter 8 of long-suffering, simplicity, meekness, and patience. Be slow to wrath, for such a one is very prudent, since he that is hasty of spirit is a very fool. Be merciful, for blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Be sincere, quiet, good, trembling at the word of God. Thou shalt not exalt thyself, as did the Pharisee, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination with God. Thou shalt not entertain temerity in thy soul, for a rash man shall fall into mischief. Thou shalt not go along with the foolish, but with the wise and righteous. For he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but he that walketh with the foolish shall be known. Receive the afflictions that befall thee with an even mind, and, re 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 and reverses without overmuch sorrow, knowing that a reward shall be given to thee from God as was given to Job and to Lazarus. Chapter 9 That it is our duty to esteem our Christian teachers above our parents, the former being the means of our well-being, the other only of our being. Thou shalt honor him that speaketh to thee the word of God, and be mindful of him day and night, and thou shalt reverence him not as the cause of thy being, but as the cause of thy well-being. For where the doctrine concerning God is, their God is present. Thou shalt every day seek the face of the saints, that thou mayest acquiesce in their words. Chapter 10 That we ought not to separate ourselves from the saints, but to make peace between those that quarrel, to judge righteously, and not to accept persons. Thou shalt not make schisms among the saints, but be mindful of the followers of Korah. Thou shalt make peace between those that are at variance, as Moses did, when he persuaded them to be friends. Thou shalt judge righteously, for the judgment is the Lord's. Thou shalt not accept persons when thou reprovest for sins, but do as Elijah and Micaiah did to Ahab, and Abedmelech the Ethiopian to Zedekiah, and Nathan to David, and John to Herod. Chapter 11 Concerning him that is double-minded or of little faith. Be not of a doubtful mind in thy prayer, whether it shall be granted or not. For the Lord said to me, Peter, upon the sea, Thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Be not thou ready to stretch out thy hand to receive, but to shut it when thou shouldst give. Chapter 12 of Doing Good If thou hast by the work of thy hands, give, that thou mayest labor for the redemption of thy sins. For by alms and acts of faith sins are purged away. Thou shalt not grudge to give to the poor, nor, when thou hast given, shalt thy murmur, for thou shalt know who will repay thee thy reward.
For the scripture saith, He that hath pity on the poor lendeth to the Lord, and according to his gift so it shall be repaid him again. Thou shalt not turn away from him that is needy, for it is saith, He that stoppeth his ears, that he may not hear the cry of the needy himself, also shall call, and there shall be none to hear him. Thou shalt communicate in all things to thy brother, and shalt not say that they are thine own. For all common participation of the necessaries of life is prepared by God for all men. Thou shalt not take off thy hand from thy son or from thy daughter, but shalt teach them the fear of the God of God from their youth. For it saith, Correct thy son, so shall he afford thee good hope. Chapter 13 How masters ought to behave themselves to their servants, and how servants ought to be subject. Thy manservant or thy maidservant, who trust in the same God, thou shalt not command with bitterness of spirit, lest they groan against thee, and wrath be upon thee from God. And ye servants, be subjects to your masters, as to the representatives of God, with attention and fear as to the Lord, and not to men. Chapter 14. Concerning hypocrisy and obedience to the laws and confessions of sins. Thou shalt hate all hypocrisy, and thou shalt do whatever is pleasing to the Lord. By no means forsake the commands of the Lord, but observe the things which thou hast received from him, neither adding to them nor taking away from them. For thou shalt not add unto his words, lest he convict thee, and thou become a liar. Thou shalt confess thy sins to the Lord thy God, and thou shalt not add to them any more, that it may be well with them, with thee from the Lord thy God, who willeth not the death of a sinner, but his repentance. Chapter 15. Concerning the regard due to parents. Thou shalt be observant to thy father and mother, and the causes of thy being born, that thou mayest live long on the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Overlook not thy brethren and thy kindred, for thou shalt not overlook those who are nearly related to thee. Chapter 16. Concerning the, subject, the subjection due the king and to rulers. Thou shalt fear the king, knowing that his appointment is of the Lord. His rulers thou shalt honor and as the ministers of God, for they are the avengers of all unrighteousness, to whom pay taxes, tribute, and every oblation with a willing mind. Chapter 17. Concerning the pure conscience of those that pray. Thou shalt not proceed to thy prayer in the day of thy wickedness, before thou hast laid aside thy bitterness. This is the way of life, in which may ye be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Chapter 18. That the way which was afterwards introduced by the snares of the adversary is full of impiety and wickedness. By the way of death is known by its wicked practices, for it, it, in it are ignorance of God, and the introduction of many evils and disorders and disturbances, through which come murders, adulteries, fornications, perjuries, unlawful lusts, thefts, idolatries, magic arts, witchcrafts, rapines, false testimonies, hypocrisies, double-heartedness, deceit, pride, malice, insolence, covetousness, obscene talk, jealousy, rashness, haughtiness, arrogance, impudence, persecution of the good, enmity to truth, love of lies, ignorance of righteousness. For they who do such things adhere not to goodness, nor to righteous judgment. They watch not for good, but for evil, from whom meekness and patience are far off, who love vain things, pursuing after reward, having no pity on the poor, not laboring for him that is in misery, nor knowing him that made them, Murderers of infants, destroyers of the workmanship of God, who turned away from the needy, adding affliction to the afflicted, the flatterers of the rich, the despisers of the poor, full of sin. May you, children, be delivered from all these. Chapter 19. That we must not turn from the way of piety, neither to the right nor to the left. See that no one seduce thee from piety, for saith God, Thou mayest not turn aside from it, for the right hand, nor the left hand, that thou mayest have understanding in all that thou dost. For if thou turn not out of the right way, thou wilt not be wicked. Chapter 20 That we ought not to despise any of the sorts of food that are set before us, but, be, but gratefully and orderly to partake of them. Now concerning the several sorts of food, the Lord said to thee, 
Ye shall eat the good things of the earth, and all sorts of flesh shall ye eat as a green herb, but thou shalt pour out the blood, for not those things that go into the mouth, but those that come out of it defile a man. I mean blasphemies, evil speaking, and if there be any other thing of the like nature, but do thou eat the fat of the land with righteousness. For if there be anything pleasant, it is his, and if there be anything good, it is his. Wheat for the young man, and wine to cheer the minds. For who shall eat, or who shall drink without him? And the wise Ezra admonished thee, saying, Go your way, and eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and be not sorrowful. Chapter 22 That we ought to avoid the eating of things offered to idols. But abstain from eating things offered to idols, that ye may not become partakers with demons, for the Gentiles offer those things in honor of demons, that is, to the dishonor of the one God. Chapter 22 A Constitution of our Lord, how we ought to baptize, and into whose death. Now concerning baptism, bishop or presbyter, we have already given direction, and we now say that thou shalt all, that, that shall so baptize as the Lord commanded us, saying, Go ye and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, for the Father who sent, of Christ who came, of the Comforter who testified. But thou shalt first anoint the person with the holy oil, and afterwards thou shalt baptize him with water, and in the conclusion thou shalt seal him with ointment, with the, uh, with the anointing with holy oil, may be the participation of the Holy Spirit, and with water the symbol of the death of Christ, and the ointment the seal of the covenants. But if there be neither oil nor ointment, water is sufficient, both for the anointing of the, for, and for the seal, and for the confession of him that is dying, namely dying together with Christ. Moreover, before baptism, let him that is to be baptized fast, for even the Lord, when he first was first baptized by John, and abode in the wilderness, afterwards fasted forty days and forty nights. But he was baptized and then fasted, not having himself any need of cleansing, nor of fasting, nor of purification, who was by nature pure and holy, but that he might both testify the truth to John and afford to us an example. Wherefore our Lord was not baptized into his own passion, or death, or resurrection, for none of those things had been happened, had then happened, but for another purpose, on which account he, by his own authority, fasted after his baptism as being the Lord of John. But he who is to be initiated into his death ought first to fast and then to be baptized, for it is not reasonable that he who has been buried with Christ and is risen again with him should appear dejected at his very resurrection. For man is not Lord of our Savior's constitution, since one is the master and the other is the servant. Chapter 23. Which days of the week we ought to fast, and which not, and for what reasons? But let not your fast be with hypocrites, for they fast on the second and fifth days of the week, the second being the Ftera, meaning Monday, and the fifth day being Thursday. But do ye fast either, either the five days or the fourth day, and the day of the preparation, the fourth day being Wednesday, and the day of the preparation being Friday? Fourth day, that, that in Greek we, we uh, um, number the days by numbers. The first day being Sunday. The second day being uh, Monday. Third day being Tuesday. Wednesday being the fourth day. And uh, the fifth day being uh, Thursday. And the preparation day being Friday. Paraskevi, as we still say it in Greek. So Wednesday and Friday, it says here, we should um, fast. Um, ye must fast the day of preparation, because on that day the Lord suffered the death of the cross under Pontius Pilate. Yet the Sabbath and the Lord's day, that is sa uh, Saturday and Sunday, keep these as festivals. So you don't fast on Saturday and Sunday. Keep the uh, Saturday Sabbath and the Lord's day keep as festivals, because the former is the memorial of the creation. And the latter of the direction. Saturday is the, the, remember, the memorial of creation, and Sunday being the Lord's Day being the day of the Lord's resurrection. And in the whole year, there is only one Sabbath to be otherwise observed by you, 
that of our Lord's burial, on which men ought to keep a fast, but not a festival. For inasmuch as the Creator was under the earth, the sorrow for him is more forcible than the joy for the creation, because the Creator is more honorable by nature and dignity than his own creatures. Chapter 24. What sort of people they ought to be who offer the prayer that was given by the Lord. Now when ye pray, be not as the hypocrites, but as the Lord hath appointed us in the gospel, so pray ye. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Pray this thrice in a day, preparing yourselves beforehand, that ye may be worthy of the adoption of the Father, lest when ye call him unworthingly, ye be reproached by him, as Israel once his firstborn son was told, If I be thy father, where is my glory? And if I be a lord, where is my fear? For the glory of fathers is the holiness of their children, and the honor of masters is the fear of their servants, as the contrary is dishonor and confusion. For saith he, Through you my name is blasphemed among the Gentiles. Chapter 15 A Mystical Thanksgiving But be ye always thankful, as faithful and honest servants, and in respect to the Eucharist, say thus, We thank thee, our Father, for that life which thou hast made known to us by Jesus thy Son, by whom thou madest all things, and takest care of the whole world, whom thou hast sent to become man for our salvation, whom thou hast permitted to suffer and die, whom thou hast raised up and been pleased to glorify, and hast seated at thy right hand, by whom thou also thou hast promised us the resurrection of the dead. Do thou, Lord Almighty, everlasting God, so gather together thy church from the ends of the earth into thy kingdom, as this was once scattered and is now become one loaf. We also, our Father, thank thee for the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for us for his precious body, and for his precious body of which we celebrate these representations, as he himself appointed us to show forth his death. For through him glory shall be given to thee forever. Amen. Let no one eat of them that is not initiated, but those only who have been baptized into the death of our Lord. But if any one that is not initiated conceal himself and partake, he eateth eternal condemnation, because being not of the faith of Christ, he hath partaketh of such things as it is not lawful for him to partake of, to his own punishment. But if any one be a partaker through ignorance, instruct him quickly and initiate him, that he may not go out a despiser. Chapter 26. A Thanksgiving at the Divine Participation. After the participation of the Eucharist, that is, we give thanks in this manner. We thank thee, God and Father of Jesus, our Savior, for thy holy name which thou hast caused to dwell among us, and for the knowledge, faith, love, and immortality which thou hast given us through thy Son, Jesus. Thou, Almighty God, the God of the universe, hast by him created the world and the things that are therein, and has planted a law in our souls, and beforehand has prepared things for the convenience of men. God of our holy and blameless fathers, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, thy faithful servants, thou God who art powerful, faithful, and true, and without deceit in thy promises, who didst send upon earth Jesus thy Christ to converse with men as a man, when he was God, the Word, and man, to take away error by the roots, do thou thyself, even now, through him, be mindful of this thy holy church, which thou hast purchased with the precious blood of thy Christ, to deliver it from all evil, evil and perfect, perfect it in thy love and thy truth, and gather us all together into thy kingdom which thou hast prepared. Maranatha, our Lord, is come. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. God the Lord, who is manifest to us in the flesh, if anyone be holy, let him draw near, but if anyone be not such, let him become such by repentance. Permit also your presbyters to give thanks. Chapter 27 A Thanksgiving in Respect of the Mystical Ointment Concerning the ointment, give thanks in this manner. 
We give thee thanks, God, the creator of the whole world, both for the fragrancy of the ointment and for the immortality which thou hast made known to us by thy Son, Jesus, since thine are the glory and the power forever. Amen. Whosoever cometh to thee and giveth thanks in this manner receiveth him as a disciple of Christ. But if he preach another doctrine, different from that which Christ by us hath delivered to you, ye must not permit him to give thanks, for such a one insulteth God, rather than glorify him. Chapter 28 We ought not to be indifferent about fellowship. But whosoever cometh to you, let him be first examined, and then received, for ye have understanding, and are able to know the right hand from the left, and to distinguish false teachers from the true. But when a teacher cometh to you, supply him cordially with what he needeth. And even when a false teacher cometh, ye shall give him for his necessity, but shall not receive his error, nor indeed may ye pray together with him, lest ye be polluted with him. Every true prophet or teacher that cometh to you is worthy of his maintenance, as being a laborer in the word of righteousness. Chapter 29 A Constitution Concerning Oblations All the first fruits of the winepress, the threshing floor, the oxen, and the sheep shalt thou give to the priests, that they store that thy storehouses and garners and the products of thy land may be blessed, and that thou mayest be strengthened with corn and wine and oil, and that the herds of thy cattle and the flocks of thy sheep be, may be increased. Thou shalt give the tenth of thine increase to the orphan, and to the widow, and to the poor, and to the stranger. All the first fruits of thy hot bread, of thy barrels of wine, or oil, or honey, or nuts, or grapes, or the first fruits of other things thou shalt give to the priests, but those of silver and of garments, and of every kind of possession to the orphan and to the widow. Chapter 30. How we ought to assemble together and celebrate the festival day of our Savior's resurrection, that is Easter. Pascha. On the day of the resurrection of the Lord, that is the Lord's day, Sunday, assemble yourselves together without fail, giving thanks to God, and praising him for those mercies which God hath bestowed upon you through Christ, in delivering you from ignorance and bondage, and that your sacrifice may be unspotted and acceptable to God, who hath said concerning his church universal, in every place shall incense and a pure sacrifice be offered unto me, for I am a great king, saith the Lord Almighty, and my name is wonderful among the heathen. Chapter 31 Priesthood holders, what, qualify, qual, what qualifications they ought, they ought to have who are to be ordained? Moreover, elect bishops worthy of the Lord and presbyters and deacons, pious men, righteous, meek, free from the love of money, lovers of truth, approved, holy, impartial, able to teach the word of piety, and rightly dividing the doctrines of the Lord. And honor ye them as your fathers, as your lords, as your benefactors, as the causes of your well-being, reprove ye one another, not in anger, but in mindness, mildness, and with kindness and peace. Observe all things that are commanded you by the Lord. Be watchful for your life. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men who wait for their Lord, when he will come, at even, or in the morning, or at cock crowing, or at midnight, for at what hour they think the Lord not the Lord will come. And if they open to him, blessed are those servants because they were found watching. For he will gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. Watch therefore and pray that you do not sleep unto death, for your former good deeds will not profit you. For at the last part of your life you go astray from the truth, if at the last part of your life you go astray from the true faith. Chapter 32. A prediction concerning events which are to occur. For in the last days, false prophets shall be multiplied, as such as corrupt the word, and the sheep shall be changed into wolves, and love into hatred. For through the abounding of iniquity, the love of many shall wax cold. For men shall hate and persecute and betray one another. They shall appear the deceiver of the world, the enemy of the truth, the prince of lies, whom the Lord Jesus shall destroy with the spirit of his mouth, who taketh away the wicked with the wit with his lips, 
and many shall be offended at him, but they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Thereupon shall be the voice of a trumpet by the archangel, and immediately the revival of those that were asleep. And then shall come the Lord and all his saints with a great con concussion above the clouds, with the angels of his power on the throne of his kingdom, to condemn the deceiver of the world, and to render to every one according to his deeds. Then shall the wicked go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous shall go into life eternal, to inherit those things which I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man such things as God hath prepared for them that love him. And they shall rejoice in the kingdom of God, which is Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Since now we have been honored with so great blessings from him, let us become his supplicants and call upon him by continual prayer, saying, chapter 33, a prayer of declaration of God's various providence. Eternal Savior, the King of gods, who alone art almighty and the Lord, the God of all beings and the God of our holy and blameless fathers and of those before us, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, who art merciful and compassionate, long-suffering and abundant in mercy, to whom every heart is naked and by whom every heart is seen, and to whom every secret thought is revealed. To thee do the souls of thy righteous, the righteous cry aloud. Upon thee do the hopes of the godly trust, thou father of the blameless, thou hearer of the supplications of those that call upon thee with uprighteousness, and who knowest the supplications that are not uttered, for thy providence reaches into the innermost parts of men, and by thy knowledge thou searchest the thoughts of every one. And in every region of the whole earth the incense of prayer and supplication is set upon, set up to thee. Thou who hast appointed this present world as a place of combat to righteousness, and hast opened to all the gate of mercy, and hast shown to every man by implanted knowledge the natural judgment and the abominations admonitions of the law, and the possession of riches is not everlasting, the ornament of beauty is not perpetual, our strength and forth our force are easily dissolved. All indeed is vapor and vanity, and nothing but consciousness of faith unfeigned passes through the midst of, he of the heavens, and returning with truth taketh hold of the right hand of the joy which is to come. And withal, before the promise of the restoration of all things is accomplished, the soul itself exulteth in hope and is joyful. For from the beginning, when our forefather Abraham was laboring after the way of truth, thou by a vision didst guide him, teaching him what kind of a state this world is. And knowledge went before his faith, and faith ensued upon his knowledge, and the covenant was a consequence of his faith. For thou saith, I will make thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is by the seashore. Still further, when thou hast given him Isaac, and knewest him to be similar in his character, thou wast called also his God, saying, I will be a God to thee, and to thy seed after thee. And when our father Jacob was sent into Mesopotamia, thou showedest him Christ, and by him speaking, saying, Behold, I am with thee, and I will increase thee, and multiply thee exceedingly. And thus speaking thou to Moses, thy faithful and, holy, faithful and holy servant, at the vision of the bush, I am he that is. That is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Thou protector of the posterity of Abraham, blessed art thou forever. And we'll continue with chapter 13, a prayer declarative of God's various creations with uh, book 34. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you so much.